Good morning. All right, so we're going to pick up where we left off, um, which is now section 1.2. We're going to look at exponents and radicals in this section. Um, before we do that, just a couple of reminders. Um, if you have done the assignments that were already due this week, right, I am being a little lenient on turning those in because I know people have added us late and things like that. Um, so please just make sure that by the end of the week, you've completed the um, orientation quiz, the plagiarism quiz, you've sent me your introductory email, um, you've completed the web assign, getting started assignment. Okay, and so if you haven't completed that one yet, um, you will have to go in and request an extension on that one in web assign um, because the due date has already passed, so it's going to lock you out of it. Um, but if you haven't completed that yet, um, or if you're having issues getting into web assign, for sure, email me and let me know. Um, but I can give you an extension till the end of the week to get that one done if you need to. Um, the only other thing that's due that has not been due already is the Respondus Lockdown Browser Tutorial. Um, that's due by midnight tomorrow night, um, so just be sure you get that done. And again, um, go ahead and try it out. Um, try downloading it. Make sure you don't have any issues, because um, if you're waiting till tomorrow night, um, I might not be able to respond to any issues that you run into. Um, so please go ahead and try that out um, and let me know if you do have any issues before tomorrow. Okay. Um, any questions, comments, concerns before we get started today? All right. So, like I said, we're going to look at exponents and radicals in this section. Okay, so exponents being um, that little number up at the top um, that we raise a value to, um, and then radicals being anything like a square root, a cube root, things like that. Okay, and so we're going to look at both of those things and the relationship between them um, in this section now. All right, so first off, integer exponents. So if we have um, an A value, okay, and again, we're still dealing with real numbers in this case, and then n is some positive integer value, the nth power of a is going to be represented by a times itself, and there's going to be n of these, okay? Um, so we're going to multiply a times itself n times, and that's going to give us a to the nth power, okay? So in other words, if you had something like 2 to the third power, what would that mean? Exactly. Okay, so we're going to multiply 2 times itself 3 times, so 2 times 2 times 2. And then when we're dealing with actual numbers, we can actually simplify. So what is 2 to the third power going to be equal to? 8. Perfect. Okay, so that's what we're going to be working on in this section now. So some of these will be completely variables, right? And so we'll just have to deal with um, the variables and their exponents. Um, some of these will actually be real numbers, and we can actually simplify them. Okay. Now, in terms of some vocabulary, whenever I talk about the base, right, that's that A value, and that's the big number, um, and then the exponent is the little number up top. Um, so just know whenever I refer to those two terms, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so let's take a look at these. Okay, so we're doing some actual numbers here. So if I wanted to do one half to the fifth power, okay, what does that actually mean, first of all? Good. So we're multiplying one half by itself times, right? So it's going to be one half times one half times one half times one half and a fifth one half. Okay. Now you don't have to write this out every single time, right? I'm just doing this for the sake of you know, this is the first example. I'll make sure everybody's clear on what we're doing. Um, but once you get familiar with these, you don't have to actually write out all these steps. So now if I'm multiplying fractions, how am I going to multiply those fractions? Straight across, good, right? So if I multiply straight across the numerator here, what's our numerator going to be in our answer? One. Because one times one times one times one times one, all those ones still just give us a one in the end. Okay? And then the denominator, if I multiply straight across now, I've got two times itself five times, what's that going to give us? 30. 
this just becomes one over 32. And again, right, if you can skip over that step and just recognize, okay, one to the fifth power is one, two to the fifth power is 32, I'm gonna get one over 32. You don't have to write out all those one halves every time. Any questions on that one? All right, let's look at the second one now. Okay, so now we've got negative three to the fourth power. So if I were to write this one out, what's that gonna look like? All right, so we're multiplying negative three times itself four times. Negative three times negative three times negative three times negative three. Now, when I do this, if I multiply negative three times itself four times, first off, is this value going to become positive or negative? It's gonna be a positive, right? And the way we know that is an even number of negative values like that should give us a positive answer in the end. So really we can just multiply three times three times three times three since we know the answer is gonna come out positive. So what would our final answer be this time? 81, perfect. Okay. Now, notice on this one, because that negative three was in parentheses, we were raising the entire negative three value to the fourth power. Okay, so make sure in that case, whenever that's in parentheses like that, you're actually raising the entire value to the fourth. Now let's look at the last one. What's different about this one compared to the second one? There's no parentheses, right? So in this case, that negative is not part of the exponent. Only the three is being raised to the fourth power. So when we write this one out, we're gonna put a negative out front, and then we're gonna write three times three times three times three, okay? Exactly, it's like negative one times and then three to the fourth power. So now our answer is actually gonna come out negative, right, because we have the negative out front, and then we're gonna have these threes multiplied together. So what's the final answer gonna be this time? It should be negative 81, perfect. Okay, so that's why we have to be careful with those parentheses now, right, a negative three in parentheses to the fourth means we're actually multiplying negative three times itself four times, Whereas if there is no parentheses, that negative just follows through the problem and we're only raising the three to the fourth power. Any questions on any of those now? All right. So now we can look at zero and negative exponents, right? So what we just looked at were all positive integers. Okay, now if we have a zero exponent, any real number to the zero power should give us one. So long as a is not equal to zero, okay? So make sure you understand here, this is any real number other than zero raised to the zero power will be equal to one. If we have negative exponents, okay, so a to the negative n, we can actually take those negative exponents now, we can move them into the denominator and make them positive exponents. So a to the negative n just becomes one over a to the positive n. Okay, that's a good question, right? So let's, the way this makes the most sense to me is to actually kind of create a table of values and think through this. So if we start, I'm gonna go with like two to the third power. What is two to the third power equal to? Eight, right? So we got two to the third equals eight. Now I'm gonna go down to two to the second power. What's two to the second power? Four, good. Then I'm gonna do two to the first power. What would two to the first power be equal to? Two. So what I want you to look at now is the pattern that's going on between each of these values. How am I going from eight to four and then from four to two? Dividing by two each time, right? 
So the step to get from here to here, this is division by two. The step to get from here to here, I'm dividing by a two. So now if I wanna go to two to the zero power, I'm gonna do that step again. I'm gonna divide by two. And what is two divided by two? One, right? So that's why two to the zero power is one. The same thing happens regardless of the base, right? If I were to do three to the third power, that would be 27. Three squared is equal to nine. Three to the first is equal to three. Again, this time I'm dividing by three each time. So if I wanna to go to three to the zero power, I'm gonna to have to divide this by three again. And so this is gonna give us one. And so that's why anything to the zero power, you're always going to get a one there. Okay. Now, if you want to continue this pattern to kind of look at negative exponents, right, because that's the next thing we're going to look at. If I were to divide this by two again, what are we going to get? Point 0.5, right, or one over two which is two to the negative one power, right? Because I'm subtracting one from the exponent again, that two to the negative one, we already said, if you have a negative exponent, we can move it into the denominator. That's how we get one half. Same thing with this one over here. If I were to divide this by three, then it give us one third, and that's the same as three to the negative one power now. Okay. All right, so who asked that question? Destry, does that make sense now why that gives us one when we raise something to the zero power? Okay, you're welcome. Any questions on this slide now? All right, so now we've got four sevenths raised to the zero power. So what is four sevenths to the zero power gonna be equal to? One, right? So any real number raised to the zero power should be one. All right, let's look at the second one now. We have x to the negative one. So how could we rewrite that now to get rid of that negative exponent? Good, one over, and then this becomes x to the positive one power. We don't really need that exponent of one, so we can just write that as one over x, okay? So yeah, so make sure in this case, right, when you have a negative exponent, we're actually moving it to the denominator to make it a positive exponent. It doesn't make the value itself negative though, right? So this just becomes one over x. Any questions on that one? All right, let's look at the last one here. So now we have negative two to the negative three power. So how could we rewrite that one first of all? Okay, right, just don't look negative, good, right? So we wanna write one over negative two to the positive three power now. So we can get rid of the negative exponent by moving it into the denominator. Just make sure you keep the negative two in parentheses there. Now we can actually simplify negative two to the third power. What would negative two to the third power give us? Negative eight, good. So this becomes one over negative eight, because again, this is just negative two times negative two times negative two, this time we have an odd number of negatives, so that answer should come out negative. Two times two times two is eight. So this comes out as negative eight overall, okay? Now, in general, right, when we write fractions, we don't just leave negatives in the denominator like that. So you would probably wanna write this one as like negative one over eight. Okay. Now again, those are equivalent, right? So they're both simplified. But in general, when you have a fraction with a negative like that, we usually just pull it out front or put it in the numerator. 
Any questions on any of those now? All right. Now, laws of exponents, okay? So this is what we're gonna be working with. Anytime you have real numbers raised to powers, these are the laws that we can apply for multiplication, division, raising powers to powers, all those things. Okay, so our first law here says that if we have some base A to the M power times some base A to the N power, we can actually add those exponents together. Now notice the bases have to be the same, right? So that's the first thing. But then if we're multiplying like bases to some power, we can actually add the exponents together. Now, if multiplication gives us addition in the exponents, when we go to divide now, as long as, again, we have like bases, we can actually subtract the exponents instead. And then our third law says that if we're raising a power to some other power now, we're actually going to multiply those exponents together, right? And so that's how we get m times n in our exponent. And then the fourth law here, if you have a product in parentheses, we have two different bases being multiplied together, and they're both raised to the n power, we can actually distribute that exponent to both of our terms there, right? So we get a to the n, times b to the n. And then the same thing is true if we have division inside of our parentheses. So a divided by b, all raised to the n power, we can actually raise a to the n and then divide that by b to the n. Now, number six is really useful when you have a negative exponent on the outside and you have a fraction on the inside. We can actually change that to a positive exponent, and all we have to do is then take the reciprocal or just flip our fraction, right? So the B goes up top, the A goes to the bottom, and then we can make that a positive exponent. And the reason for that is if we were to distribute that negative in and then move our negative exponents, right, then it would give us positives. Um, with the B in the numerator and the A in the denominator. And one quick way just to get rid of a negative exponent on the outside is just to flip the fraction on the inside to begin with. And then you can see number seven there. If you have a negative exponent in the numerator, it goes to the denominator. If you have a negative exponent in the denominator, we can actually move it to the numerator to make it positive. Any questions on those properties? And we're actually gonna do some work with actual numbers and variables and stuff. Um, but for right now, any question just on the laws of exponents as they're listed there? All right, and again, right, this is in the video. It's also in the slides in the content um, section of Blackboard. Okay, so if you need to go back and look at these for any reason, right, that's where they're located. All right, so let's actually try these out now. So our first one we've got is x to the fourth times x to the seventh. Okay, so we're gonna use our laws of exponents now to simplify this. So what are we gonna do with our exponents this time? We're going to add. Good. So because we have like bases and we're multiplying those together, that means we're going to add their exponents. We're going to keep the like base of x. We're going to add the 4 plus 7. And so what's this going to give us? X to the 11. Perfect. Any questions on that one? All right. Now we got y to the fourth times y to the negative seven. So what are we going to do this time? Okay, good, All right? So it's a four plus a negative seven, or if you want to think of it as four minus seven, that's the same thing, right? We have y to the four plus negative seven. And what is that going to give us then?
Okay, so make sure it's a y in, in the base, right? But it is to the negative three power, so y to the negative three. Now, in general, we're not going to leave negative exponents, okay? So we always want to try to make these positive. So how could we rewrite this now to make that a positive exponent? 1 over y to the third. Any questions on how we got that one now? All right. So look at the next one, c to the ninth divided by c to the fifth. So what are we going to do this time? Good. So since we have division, we're going to subtract the exponents. So when we do that, we have c to the 9 minus 5. It's always the numerator minus the denominator, so make sure you have the order correct there. And so what's that going to give us? c to the fourth. Right. Now our next one, we have b to the fourth raised to the fifth power. So what are we going to do with our exponents this time? We're going to multiply. Good. So this is going to give us b, sorry, b to the four times five. And so that becomes b to the twenty power. Any questions there? All right, now the next one here, we've got 3x raised to the third power. So what are we going to do this time? Good, right? So since we have a 3 and an x being multiplied together, that 3 is going to go with both of those, right? So this becomes 3 to the third times x to the third. Now, since we actually have a number this time, we can actually simplify that. What is 3 to the third power going to give us? 27. Good. So this becomes 27 x to the third power. Okay. Yeah, and make sure, right, it was multiplication to begin with. It's going to stay multiplication throughout, right? So it's not going to be a plus in there. It's just going to be 3 to the third, which is 27, x to the third, which is x to the third, and then those two things get multiplied. Any questions on that one now? All right, let's look at the last one. So we have x over 2 raised to the fifth power. So what's that going to look like? Good, right? So that 5 goes with both. We have x to the fifth in the numerator. We have 2 to the fifth in the denominator. And just like the last one, because we have a number this time, we can simplify that. So what's 2 to the fifth going to give us? 32. So we end up with x to the fifth over 32. Any questions on applying those laws of exponents now? Yeah, Greer. So this is the, the fourth law of exponents that I'm having difficulty with. So I, I roughly get it, but there wasn't an example problem that really highlighted it. So a, b in parentheses to the nth power, just as an example, turns into a to the n to b to the n. But how would you write that, for example, like with that so this, actual numbers or variables or et cetera? Yeah. So this one right here is like, sorry, this one right here, right? So when we have that 3x to the third power, the 3 is like the a value. The x is the b value, and then the n value is the 3 in the exponent. And so we're distributing that 3 to each, right? And so that's how we get the 3 to the third and the x to the third. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. And then we can just simplify it from there, right? So, yeah, this one right here is an example of that law. Okay. Any other questions?
All right. All right, so now we're going to add a few more steps in here. Okay, so we've got 2a to the third b squared times 3ab to the fourth, and that's all raised to the third power. Now, first thing we have to think about is our order of operations. Okay, so let's remind ourselves real quick of what order of operations is so we make sure we're going in the correct order. So what is order of operations? You can give me the acronym if you want to. PEMDAS, right? Okay, so you have P, P, M, D, A, S, where P is parentheses. Then we go to our exponents. Then we have our multiplication and our division. And then we have our addition and our subtraction, okay? Now, remember, multiplication and division technically are grouped together. Addition and subtraction are also grouped together. So if you end up with only those things remaining, you would just go left to right at that point, okay? All right, now, in this case, do we have anything in parentheses that can be simplified? No, right? So first step is parentheses. There's nothing we can do there. So now we're going to go to our second step. Now we're going to look at exponents. What are we going to have to do in terms of exponents first here then? Good, right? We have a three on the outside, right, of that second set of parentheses. So that's going to get distributed. Now notice that three only goes with the second set of parentheses, not both. So when we distribute, it's only going to all the terms in there. This becomes 2a to the third b squared. That one doesn't change. And then this is 3 to the third a to the third. And then what are we going to get for the b then when we distribute that? Good, right? That becomes multiplication because we're raising a power to a power. And so 4 times 3 is going to give us 12 this time. Any questions on that step? All right. Now, what are we going to do next then? Let's go ahead and simplify the three to the third, right? Because we actually have an exponent inside there now that we can simplify. So what is three to the third power? Give us 27, good. Everything else I'm just gonna bring down. All right, now that we've simplified everything inside of our parentheses, now what can we do? Good. Okay. And it's not really combining like terms just because it's not addition and subtraction, right? So we're really using multiplication at this point. But if we multiply this now, what can we multiply together? So let's start with the numbers, right? So if we just multiply the numbers here, what are we going to get? Yeah, the 2 and the 27, right? So 2 times 27 is going to give us what? 54, right? So we multiply the numbers together. That gives us 54. Right? Now we're going to multiply the variables, right? Yeah, we don't have to actually use FOIL here, right? Because FOIL only applies if you have addition in both sets of parentheses, right? So you would need two terms in the first one, two terms in the second one being added or subtracted. Then we can use FOIL. Here, this is all just straight multiplication, no addition or subtraction. Does that make sense? Okay. 
That's right. Okay. So now we can actually multiply the A's together, right? So if we do that, what are we going to get for our A term? Good. So we add those exponents together, and that's going to give us A to the sixth. And then we can do the same thing with the B's. We're multiplying, so we're going to add their exponents. That becomes B to the what power? 14. And that's it, right? That's all we can do in that case, right? So you multiply your numbers together, multiply any like variables together by adding their exponents, and then we're done. Any questions on any of the steps for that one now? Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. So what's our first step going to be for this next one? Good, right? So we need to distribute those exponents, and this time we have an exponent on the outside of each set of parentheses. Let's go ahead and do that. That first one then is going to give us x to the third in the numerator. We're going to have a y to the third in the denominator. So we aren't going to need a common denominator this time, Shante, because we don't actually, we're not adding or subtracting, right? So remember, the only time we have to worry about a common denominator is for addition and subtraction. Once we distribute these in there, we're going to have straight multiplication and division, okay? So we don't have to worry about common denominators. All right, so now if we distribute that 4 in there, what are we going to get in the numerator this time? Good. We multiply the 2 and the 4 to get y to the 8th, and then we just have an x to the 4th, and then down in the bottom we're going to have that z raised to the 4th power. Any questions on that step? All right, so now we basically have two fractions that we're multiplying together. So now, how are we going to multiply those together? Straight across. Good. All right. So remember, when you're multiplying fractions, we just multiply straight across. So if we look at the numerators here, when we multiply those numerators, what should we end up with? Okay, so we keep the y to the 8th, right? And then we're going to get an x to the 7th power because remember, whenever we're multiplying like bases, we add the exponents together. And so we're going to add the 3 plus the 4. So that's how we get x to the 7th and then keep the y to the 8th. Okay, so just be real careful there, right? Just remember with multiplication, we're actually adding exponents. Now, in the denominator, we just have a y to the third and the z to the fourth. Those aren't the same. We can't combine them. So I'm just going to keep both y to the third, z to the, oops, should be a four. Any questions on that step? All right. Now, in this case, we can actually simplify this a little bit more because we still have a y term in the numerator and a y term in the denominator. So what can we do with those now? Subtract, right? So we subtract the exponents because we have a division this time. And so what are we going to end up with for our y? It's going to be y to the fifth power. Good. So we're going to have x to the seventh. We're going to have a y to the fifth. And then all that's left in the denominator then is z to the fourth. And that's it. So there's nothing else we can combine, nothing else to simplify there. 
And so that would be our final answer. Any questions on that one now? Yeah, Jonathan. Um, why did the Y stay in the numerator? numerator? That's a great question, right? So, so the way I typically think about these is I'm always going to do numerator minus denominator and see what I get first. And I'm always going to put that in the numerator, right? So in this case, 8 minus 3 gives us 5. I get a Y to the fifth. I put it up top. Let's say, for instance, right, I had a Y to the third up top and a Y to the eighth on the bottom, right? I would still do numerator minus denominator. Well, what's three minus eight gonna give us? Negative five, right? So I would get a Y to the negative five over one now, right? Because I don't have anything else down there. But then what can we do with that negative exponent? We can flip it, right? We can move it to the denominator to make it positive. And so then I'm just gonna move this down here and put a positive five in the denominator instead. Okay, so I know some instructors like to say, oh, well just find your bigger number, do your subtraction and put your answer wherever the bigger number is, right? That's one way to think about it. But for me, I just like always doing numerator minus denominator. And then if I end up with any negatives, then I'm gonna move them to make them positive, okay? Any other questions there? Now, one thing I kind of breezed over earlier, right, and some of you may have seen this before, but I just want to make sure it's clear. You know, these addition and subtraction rules, right, so, so they don't seem like magic, if we have something like this, like x to the third times x to the fourth, well, we know x to the third just means we're multiplying x times itself three times, right? So this right here is going to give us x times x times x. That right there is our x to the third. And then we're multiplying that by x to the fourth power, right? So this one right here is going to give us x times x times x times x, because that's what x to the fourth power is. Well, if I multiply all of that together now, how many x's do I have all together? Seven. And so all of this now becomes x to the seventh power, which is just the addition of the three and the four, right? So that's why that addition rule works is because we're really just multiplying three X's and four X's all together. And so we have the multiplication of seven X's now. Okay. And the same thing works for the division, right? If you're dividing, that's why we subtract because you're basically just canceling out at that point. So you would have something like X to the fourth over X to the third. Well, that's four X's multiplied together in the numerator, three X's multiplied together in the denominator. Well, now three of those X's are gonna cancel, right? And so we have these all cancel out and you're left with just one X, which is the same thing as four minus three X to the first power. And again, I just I like to show that just so it doesn't seem like these are coming out of nowhere. That these are just magic rules, right? There's a reason they work, right? And that's the reason. All right, any questions there now? All right. So now we've got some negative exponents in here, some fractions to deal with, right? So they tell us to eliminate the negative exponents first, and then we'll simplify from there, right? So if we look at this first one, what are we going to want to move first? Good. So all the negative exponents are going to get moved, right? So that t to the negative fourth in the numerator, we can move it to the denominator to make it a positive. 
Same thing with the s to the negative 2 in the denominator. We can move it to the numerator and make it a positive exponent. So that's my first step. So we're going to have 6s. That's going to stay up top. The s to the negative 2 from the bottom gets moved up top. That becomes s to the positive 2. And then the denominator, we already had a 2. We had a t squared. And then I'm going to move that t to the negative 4 down to the bottom. And so that becomes a t to the positive 4 down there. Any questions on that step? All right, now we need to simplify, right? So if we look at the numerator, what can we do up top? Good, right? So we're going to add the exponents together this time. So when we add those together, that's going to give us 6s to the what power? It'd be 3, right? Because we have a 1 and a 2. So that's going to give us 3. We can do the same thing in the denominator. We have a t squared and a t to the fourth now. And so we're going to end up with t to the what power? t to the sixth. Good. Now, we have one more thing we can do on this one because we still have numbers in the numerator and denominator, so always look to see if that will simplify. Can we simplify 6 over 2? Yeah, right, it just becomes 3. So for this one, we're just going to have a 3 in the numerator with our s to the third, and then 2 just becomes a 1, so we don't really need to write it, and so we're just going to have t to the sixth there. Now, if that was a fraction that simplified and you still had a number in the denominator, just keep it, right? But in this case, that just becomes a 1, and so we don't actually have to write an understood 1 there. Okay, so it's basically like we're saying 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3 over 1 as a simplified fraction, right? And so that's why the 3 actually stays up top. The 1 stays in the denominator. And then that understood one, though, we don't have to write it in front of the t to the 6. We can just drop it. Is that a question, Haley? Okay. Any other questions there? The negatives. Yeah, so anytime you have negative exponents, we're just going to move them to the opposite location to make them positive. So in this case, I had this t to the negative 4. I needed to make it a positive 4, so I moved it to the denominator. And that's how I got this term down here now. And then the thing that was negative was the s to the negative 2. I wanted to make it a positive exponent, so I moved it to the numerator. And that's how I got that s squared up in the numerator. Everything else already had positive exponents, so I just left them where they were, right? So that 6s stayed in the numerator. The 2t squared stayed in the denominator, so it was only those two terms that ended up moving. Make sense? Good. Any other questions on that one? So I don't want to say trade variables, right? All I did was move anything that had a negative exponent on it. Okay? So I could have had even more terms that had negative exponents. It's just that if I have a negative exponent, I'm going to move it to make it a positive exponent, right? And those were the two terms that had negative exponents. That's why I moved those specific terms. Does that make sense? Okay. Any other questions there? All right, let's look at the next one now. So this time we've got a negative 2 exponent on the outside of this set of parentheses. So what could we do first on this one? You could distribute 
or you could flip the fraction to make it a positive exponent on the outside, right? And it's up to you. You're gonna get the same answer regardless of which way you do it. But in this case, right, if we just flip the fraction, we can completely get rid of the negative exponent and then we don't have to deal with it anymore. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my fraction. I'm gonna put my three Z to the third in the numerator, my Y in the denominator, and then I'm gonna make this a positive two on the outside now. And that goes back to that, I think it was the next to last law that we looked at on that slide. All right, now that we've gotten rid of the negative exponent, now what can we do? Now we can distribute that exponent out, good. That's gonna give us three squared. We're gonna have a Z to the what power now? So good. The sixth is correct because we would multiply those exponents. And then in the denominator, we're just going to have a y to the second. And then our last step, right, since we actually have numbers this time, we have a 3 squared. What's 3 squared? That's going to give us 9. We have 9z to the sixth over y squared. There's no more like terms or variables to combine there, and so we can leave it just like that. Any questions on that one? All right, we're not doing anything with scientific notation, so we're going to skip all of those examples, and we'll stop there. Um, I think this will be a good place to pick up first of next week, um, so we'll actually stop with that example that we just finished. Um, if you have any questions, I can hang out for a couple more minutes. Um, I do have another class coming up, though, um, but let me know if you have any questions about anything. Again, just a reminder, if you haven't completed any of the assignments that are due this week, please make sure you get those done. Respondus Lockdown Browser Tutorial is the only thing really that's left due by midnight tomorrow night, though, so make sure you get that one done. Send me questions as you have them. Use the Ask My Teacher button in WebAssign as you're working on your WebAssign homework, um, but otherwise, I think that's all. Have a great weekend, um, and don't forget that Monday is Martin Luther King holiday, um, so we will not meet again until Wednesday of next week, okay? So we get a nice long weekend, and I will see you all on Wednesday.